Welcome back. Now we're going to talk about how we can create our very own form and the questions we often ask ourselves in terms of the types of inputs we want to use. We're probably not going to create our own components and like go really deep here into what that looks like just yet because we want to, you know, just come up with some quick concepts in terms of what types of content we're going to see on the page. Step number one. Where are we going to find a form on our page within our product for our client habitual? I think like you'll probably see like login and, you know, sign up. And I think probably like the biggest form we'll probably see is like the registration. And, and that's about it, really. This is a type of product that doesn't necessarily have a lot of forms, but registration is huge. And especially with this product, I think it's going to be pretty integral to the way people kind of like maybe talk about like why they're joining the product or maybe to like pick some interests, maybe narrowing down those interests. So let's jump right in to how we can create some form elements for our client. When I think about our client, they need to have a registration and I need to think about those different types of elements. So I'm gonna just gonna create a frame. Let's uh, press F and we're gonna just use uh, one of these screens. We'll just call it registration. Okay, so we're gonna kind of just create like a wireframe just so we get a good indication of like what we wanna build and then we can eventually get to a higher fidelity. So when a user comes to the page, they'll probably see like an input. Uh, let me just, they'll probably see 48's probably good. Don't wanna to get too fancy just yet. Let's give it a stroke. We can actually start creating some pieces if we wanted to over here. I'm going to create a couple of elements that I can just easily reuse. I know I said I wasn't going to go for creating it, but you know, maybe, maybe that's the best uh, course of action. What else do we have here? Let's make a button. And we are just going to fill that with the brand color. I don't know if I have the brand color, but we can just kind of get close to it right now. Oops. Maybe that's like our primary button. And we'll put some text in there. Same primary. Okay. I like, I like a lot. This could be like 16 pixels. Make this bold, we'll call it primary button. So we are kind of creating our own little components. We can make this white. I know it's probably not accessible, but I mean, we can kind of fine tune. I, I, like sometimes accessibility could be like a little wonky in terms of like what is actually readable and what isn't like this is probably like bordering that line. It's probably not accessible. Like if we check right now, let's do contrast like it's probably not yeah it fails but it may be more legible than black which is probably actually accessible so that's our primary button we can just go over here we can make a secondary so we'll probably have a secondary like a back button and that frame we won't have anything in it no fill but the primary button's color will probably be like a black. So that's good. We'll just call it secondary. And remember what I said about constraints. So we can do that. I can do that. Perfect, so we have a secondary and a primary. We have an input up there. I think that's fine for now. I guess let's just call this our, our components for now just so we have some basic inputs. We, like, we may have some check boxes. So it's like, this is a input field, and we'll just call it field. We probably should have some text in there. Input text, that's totally fine. And we could bump that to regular. Okay. Okay, I'm not gonna worry too much about that. We do need to, however, create some like check boxes, possibly. I'm envisioning that there will be check boxes in our future. 
32, 40. So I'm still using that base unit of eight pixels to create my components here. That's a little big, probably bump it down to 32. Change the border radius. I think that's fine. Um, we do need some text for it though. Checkbox, text. Let's just do this. So I mean, we, we can start creating some of our components. I mean, they don't necessarily need to be components. It's good to just kind of prep before we even start. Okay, I think that's enough. Cool. Let's create another frame. Select F. So when a user first comes to our registration, I think like the first thing we'll probably ask them to do is maybe like, you know, we'll probably say something like welcome. Let's uh, type that in there. We'll say something like, welcome, how are you? And we'll probably ask them to possibly like, you know, add a profile image. And like in terms of the input, uh, it's kind of tough because we don't necessarily have like an input for the actual, like it could just be a button that like uses their phone to like find an image. And that's all handled on like the iPhone side or the Android side. So that's a discussion to have with your uh, developers. So we'll just do this. Um, and let's just go to Iconify or let's use material design icons. And we'll just say profile. Oh, person. It's like, okay, there we go. So I'm going to take that. I'm just going to detach it. Command C, let's bring that into our registration. And there we go. Okay, so we have like a thing here, like a little image. Maybe we should have some text below because that is very vague. Add a photo so other members, I don't know if other members know who you are. Or actually, Add a photo. So, hmm, why would they add a photo? So you can customize your experience. This is probably like a nice to have feature. Like, do they really need a photo? Probably not. It's really about exploring if you need something versus like if it's a nice to have. So, the button here may say, upload a photo. And the secondary could be something like, skip this for now. So we want that primary action to be much bigger, much more prominent. I mean, we can even like go over here and make this a little bit less obvious. And I think another thing is we need to let people know this seems like it's going to be a multi-step process. So we need to let people know like what step of the process they're in. And let's just change that. So step one of four. Okay, and let's just bold that so it's pretty obvious. I mean, we can actually just leave it at the top. I'm not sure about the whole layout of the pages yet. So if we copy that, we can just change that over there. And the next one could be like, what's your main reason for joining? It's good to understand why they want to join. We can just pop this up here. We're not being too like crazy in terms of like how we structure just yet, but we could like essentially put these items in a frame that has auto layout and that whenever we adjust something, it's gonna bump it down. And I'll show you what that looks like. So if we select these and we do option command G, we have a frame. And if you select auto layout, it will automatically position them vertically. You can even do it horizontally, but it's gonna push it to the right over here. So you can space it any which way you want. So if I wanna like adhere to a pixel base, you know, I'll probably do like 24 pixels. And if I add to this, it's just gonna keep on pushing the content down and you can just like keep things incredibly consistent. It's just, it's for your own sanity, to be honest. Okay, so 
This will help us make some great recommendations. So when I'm thinking about this registration, I want to get as much info about the user as possible with kind of making it fun. Checkboxes are kind of hard to hit on mobile sometimes unless you make this whole tappable field like tappable or like just easy to interact with. So we can like do optional kind of like uh, checkboxes or like radio buttons. And I'll show you what we can do here. So I've taken like uh, the primary button over here and I'm just going to um, make this fill like white. I'm gonna go in and I'm going to make that fill black. Perfect. And I am going to also apply a stroke. And that stroke is going to be like, a, we'll just do 50% of uh, black. So, I mean, there you go. We kind of have like a radio button that they can click. So we can give them some options, like maybe um, one of them is discover new and exciting products. The next one could be make month to month shopping easier. So that is like a definitely a big thing in terms of like shopping and in terms of like the usefulness of this product. If you do a lot of month to month shopping, you have a lot of like things that you constantly buy over and over again. If we know more about you, we can easily make that experience much better. Get, hmm, get relevant recommendations. So there's a couple of options. And like if I select one, so for this use case, I'm just gonna select it just to kind of showcase what that's going to look like. So I'm going to do that. And that is going to be white. And that's what it could look like. So all of a sudden we kind of have a nice little active state there too. And we can create a component for that. What I've done here is I've actually removed this skip because this is a mandatory. Um, I'm thinking about this actually being mandatory because it's pretty, it's pretty big in terms of like the type of question we're asking. Uh, and if they don't fill it out, we can give them like a disabled state. So just make sure your disabled states are easy to read in terms of contrast. And when they do select that, it will move to the active state here. You can work along with me and just think about the type of content we are, we are creating for in terms of the registration. I mean, there's so many different things we can do. We can um, just think about like the different types of like inputs that we need and the different types of processes that we're going to like design for. So I'm designing this registration process actively as I'm kind of coming up with these concepts, I'm thinking about the different questions I'm asking users. So like I probably at this point, I want them to just start picking some like interests. So I'll get started by picking some interests. And I mean, I don't even know. I think that's pretty <laughs> self-explanatory. And they can essentially like, we could create like uh, cards for them to make it a little more fun. Like checkboxes are kind of boring. So for something like this, we could create like cards. I'm not sure what's in the cards. Maybe, um, actually, I think it would be best if we do something like this. Let's create a frame for a square and we'll put a text in that frame and we'll call it something like music. That's a little too big, but let's uh, go down to 20 pixels. And um, that's fine. This is going to be our different type of checkbox. And the background color, let's give it a fill. So it's a little bit more interesting than it is now. And there you go. Like we easily have like a checkbox that we can select. So there it is. Remember what I said about constraints. 
So if I position this like that, I'm going to try and make this almost a square. So if I position this like that, there we go. Doesn't need to be perfect. We have a bunch of different options. And if they will do the same thing over here, oops, I forgot to actually make that continue. Um, this one can be continue as well, for now at least. I don't know what this is gonna be. It could be like an image. It could be like a colored square. I think we need to really kind of think about that a little bit more in terms of what that active state looks like. But that's when we get more in depth in terms of like actually creating the component. But now I know what types of questions I'm asking. I'm asking them to upload a photo for customization purposes, you know, making their experience a little bit more delightful. It's not needed, so I gave them like a skip option. I asked them why they're joining because maybe the types of products we do push to them is relevant based off of this question. You know, if they want to have like a month to month subscription of things, like we could do something like that. If they uh, also discover new and exciting products, like we can push like new products to them. But if they want relevant recommendations, it's like a little bit of both in terms of uh, the types of products we decide to push to them. If we think about this from a data like collecting perspective, this will definitely help us kind of learn more about our users. So if people keep on creating this, we'll know the types of users we're getting in terms of like what they're trying to achieve. Are they trying to like, are the majority of our users doing month to month subscriptions or something like that? If that's the case, then it could actually force us to pivot the purpose of the application. It moves away from relevant recommendations to more so like a one-stop shop where we constantly just ship to you every single month. And that's it's constantly relevant and it's constantly based off of what you need. So Take that into consideration in terms of the types of questions you're asking. Even for over here, like getting started, uh, I've kind of given them the option to select different types of interests. I could have sports. I could have like tech. Another option could be like gaming. I've given them a bunch of different interests. I don't know why I have four. I mean, we could have four. We can even go a, a deeper level and think about like now, like narrow it down. What type of music do you like? Do you like to listen to like vinyl? Do you like to listen to live music? Are you thinking about like buying speakers? Like if you've selected something like fashion, like are you into sneakers, etc.? Or if there's anything else, can you add that? So we could even go even deeper here. I think we're at a good spot right now just to get some basic information for from our user. What we can do for now is what I would do is actually put this together and put it into a prototype and test with users immediately, test fast. Where here we can just uh, do get started. At the end, we'll probably have like a nice little screen that just says like, woohoo, you did it. Like <laughs> these are your results or we could show them results if that's important. I don't know. It's really gonna depend based off of like how we validate our assumptions. But this is essentially how you go about like thinking through a form. You gotta ask yourself the questions of like, well, especially with this case, in terms of registration, what types of questions am I going to ask our users? And like, how do I break that down? Like what types of inputs am I using based off of those questions? Now this is a really simple form and I'm sure eventually in your career, you're definitely going to have much more complex forms. So take it step by step, start with sketching, move on to like user flows in terms of like figuring out what that process kind of looks like. And uh, then jump into like a, a product like Figma and really start to figure out those details. So that's how you create your own form within Figma.